who is Morncan? He has so many spells, which are all very useful, but yeah. he, he's very obsessed with the balance. So if you ask Morden Kanan, Morden Kanan would tell you, look, somebody has to look after the cosmic inner workings of everything to keep it all running, right? Adventures, Devil Asmodeus, Orcus, St. Cuthbert, all these people I use are always trying to kick things off the axis where they're all very carefully balanced, right? Like. You know, you have gods, you have the dead three showing up and screwing around with things, you have mind flares popping in and trying to like destroy entire worlds, you have the gift doing who knows what. You know, Morden Kanan would tell you someone has to keep track of all this crap, and when things are about to go horribly sideways, show up and keep it all in mind. That's what he would tell you. He would say, I and my associates are essentially the cosmic police force that keeps everything running. Right? We keep everything in balance because if anything, if the balance is thrown off, everything falls over. Mm -hmm. You know, fall down, go boom, bye bye. That's what he would tell you. What everyone else in the cosmos would tell you is that Morden Kanan is a self interested, <laughs> though very powerful and at times useful individual. But at the end of the day, he's in it for Morden Kanan. Right? And that's like, no one really, like, who knows, right? Like, I, I don't know who's right. Like, we know the cosmos is still around, it hasn't fallen over. And he would say, look, I've done it. But someone like St. Cuthbert might tell you, like, no, it's because this fool is using this fear of everything going out of balance. Like, do you really think that demons and devils and devas and everyone just fighting endlessly is how things are supposed to be? Right. You think that if lawful good, if, if the hosts of Mount Celestia would have scoured the other planes of evil, how would that be bad, right? We know evil is self-centered. It's all gone. The universe will be great. How could that possibly be a bad thing, right? This guy clearly... He's got this some long con he's playing, right? <laughs> so that's what definitely that that's what someone like Cuthbert would tell you. And you run him quite often. I have I, I've played uh, two or three games with Morgan Kanan. I am not a fan of Morgan Kanan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, neither is Avon. Uh, <laughs> he's not a big fan of order to begin with. So I, I, would, I would argue that Morgan Kanan is the opposite of my personal character. Yeah, probably. Uh, what, why do you enjoy like uh, using him oh, as it, a character for like the beginning of adventures? I love using Morgan Kanan because the ambiguity. Because D and D players are programmed to just go like, "Here's a person to give you a quest. Yeah. Please do this." They go, "Okay, I will do that for you." And what I love is when players go, "Wait a second. Should we be doing this? Like, I've never had anyone question Morgan Kanan. We had Ar Archon the Cruel traveled to this the weird demi realm of shadow. Yeah. And alongside Melf and yeah. all these other notable characters. And at the end, they found these weird gems straight from this bizarre, what might be the edge of the negative material plane. They brought it back. And Morgan Kanan's like, oh, you should give those to me. And they said, sure. And Morgan Kanan's like, I'll take it, right? That's that. Now, if Joe's watching this, or else the players that came <laughs> watching this, perhaps Morning Kanan's goose is cooked, but we'll see, right? Because people just, oh, that's the quest giver. That's our, that's our, that's our we can trust them. They're giving us a quest, right? <laughs> and Morning Kanan says, maybe not, right? I am probably not evil, because I'm not just, you know, disintegrating dudes left and right, but. When I talk with the balance, am I a true believer, or is that just my cover story? Morden Kanan will always tell you, no, I know more. Yeah. Well, more, I, I would explain. But there's, I don't have time to go into the full details. You just have to trust me. And didn't this venture go so well, and you've walked away with magic and power and gold and treasure, which I have no interest in. Just this one piece. Let me just take that for safekeeping. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with Bigby, and he'll take care of this. Don't worry about it. You know, things like that. Because that's the other thing. We haven't really seen the rest of the members of Morden Kanan's coterie yet, but they're out there. He has many agents, right? Um, are, they, are they secret? Or are we aware of them? Oh, you should always, it's everything. Assume anything Morden Kanan, he also has some sort of secret shadowy version of it somewhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes, like, you know, plots within plans. And I'm sure there have been instances where Morden Kanan's agents have unwittingly fought each other for something, right? <laughs> like where he just, ah, collateral damage, I'm willing to let that happen, keep my, my organization intact. So ultimately, he pretends like he wants balance. But that's the thing, is he, but is he wrong? We don't know, because everything's still running, so maybe there's something there. Again, Mordekin would say, only I, through my countless eons of study, have figured this out. Others could attempt to replicate what I do, but lacking my wit and my cunning and my boundless knowledge, and matchless experience, they, they surely would make a mistake. Right. And then every, the balance is thrown off, and everything falls over. Is he almost demigod status? Oh, he's incredibly powerful. I mean, 
you don't get spells named after you in the player's handbook just by being like a 10th level wizard. Like, <laughs> you like... <laughs> I like to think of it as, if you have a spell named after you in the player's handbook, yeah. you have messed with the weave to such a deep level right. that like you have like altered the kernel, you know, if you're a computer person, you know, the kernel, like the sort of root of the operating system. You've right. made changes there. So even like Mistra, you know, it has to look at that and go like, oh, that was actually kind of clever. <laughs> and then that spell ends up like, not only does that spell echo across all these worlds, I'm sure there are, are spell casters in Eberron who are, who's more than Kanan? And they don't know. They've never met this person. He's never visited Eberron, or maybe he has, but right. he doesn't walk around Corvair and be like, hello, I'm more than Kanan. Nice to meet you. Have I told you about, can I interest you in this pamphlet on the balance? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> But they know there's this, and they probably have like stories about Morden Canaan. They just know this spell, when someone discovered it, it was also bound up with the identity of this Morden Canaan person who, know, who knows who that is, right? Um, same with Bigby with the various hand spells, right? Right. These are um, wizards who, you know, hacked into such a deep level of magic that they left their fingerprints on, that can't, in a way that can't be erased, that transcends world, that, 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 is spread across all the planes, almost all the worlds. All well, the worlds, almost really. like uh, It kind of reminds me, in a sense, like a black hole or a planetoid where the gravity itself has now yeah. come uh, interwoven into yep. that entity. But it's a pretty convenient party trick, right? If you show up in a world you haven't been to before, because you have to go there, for the for purposes of the balance, now to speak on behalf of our friend Morden Cannon, <laughs> our, our against good him. friend Morden Cannon. But if our good friend Morden Cannon has to go to another world, let's right. say they go to the world of the Nantir Vale, maybe they haven't been to before. Right, uh, Morden Canaan. And wait, I've heard of you. I've heard of you. I've heard of your spells. But we, no, our myth is that Morden Canaan prove it. Well, any any number of divinations would reveal I'm not lying. I am Morden Canaan. It's a nice way to get some instant credit at like the local wizards guild. Right? <laughs> I'm Morden Canaan. You've been casting my spells for untold generations. Right. That's a pretty handy calling card to wave in people's under people's noses. Like you should probably be taking me seriously because I invented magic. You're welcome. <laughs> Now I super, need some help. Super humble dude. Yeah. Well. Super humble. <laughs> <laughs> I invented magic. Morden Cannon might tell you that humility is not a luxury he can afford. Given... <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought all my characters were incredibly arrogant, but I think that was the most arrogant thing I've ever heard in D&D. Yeah, when you consider Morden Cannon too, you have these other wizards like Big B, and they kind of work maybe for him. And they have equally, you know, like, they have spells too that are found on every world and you know, countless worlds that people haven't even visited yet, but there they go. Their fingerprint is like so deep. I like to almost think of it like, like Mistra was creating the weave and Morden Kanan like snuck in. It's like, you know, the cement hasn't set and he and Big Bear like you know, put their hand or write their name in it. And she comes back and is like, ah, well played guys. Right? So you know what? I could try to erase this, but I don't want to deal with it. And otherwise I'm pretty happy with the weave where it stands. Right. So I'm just gonna, fine. Fine, you got to write your name in the cement. 